Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 9, Episode 7. I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. Let's go, Blair. All right. So we start in Stacy's apartment and TJ has come over to visit. Yeah. This is her crash pad to where she can get away from the chaos at her house. Pretty much her husband. Yeah. TJ and Stacy are painting each other and whoever has the best painting will win. They decide what they want to do if each person wins. TJ says that he wants to go to the track and work out and Stacy would like to give him a spa day. She mm. has to tell him that she is flirting with him mm. and she wants him to accept it. And he's like, I accept it. I see it. I receive it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he is a devout Christian. So they are practicing celibacy. Stacy has been celibate for over a year now. And mm-hmm. she admits that it has been challenging. Yeah. She, in her painting, she gives him like one green eye and his painting is just kind of like a wide blocky version of her. Mm-hmm. TJ asks her, and I don't think they said who won, but TJ asks her what's going on with the mediation. Mm-hmm. They have to decide who takes what, then they can officially file for divorce. Yeah. She tells him that the ladies think that he's running game on her, that they've kind of been laughing at their relationship, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. Yeah. TJ does plan on meeting them at Jazzy's event. He says that they're not making fun of us. They are making fun of God. They are making fun of God, what, what is your thoughts on this? I was asking, what is your thoughts? No, no, no. I'm I'm going on a rant. So <laughs> okay. like, so 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 like, I already know where I'm going with this. So that's why I'm like, what is your thoughts? <laughs> I already know where I'm going. <laughs> um, my thoughts is they don't claim to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. They claim to be friends. I think that Stacy is into TJ at least by what she's saying, mm-hmm. and TJ. If he is, it's hard to tell. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's interested in Stacy. Um, I think that it's one thing to be celibate and to not want to, you know, go against your religious beliefs when mm-hmm. it comes to that. But you can still have attraction towards the person and still have affection towards the person. Yeah. And I'm not seeing that at all. So this is just honestly, this is looking like a business arrangement to me. I don't know what to say. Mm. I think it's easy to look at TJ as as many reviewers has been looking as a lot of people say um online and things like that and they don't believe that tj is straight they they believe that maybe he's in the closet but i would like to draw your focus off of tj and let's look at stacy i don't know if stacy let him know (laughs) what's going on here Mm. it kind of reminds me of if if you ever been in school and the the popular girl go and flirt with the nerd of at at the table to kind of like make fun of it to like as a joke and this is what it came off as so you're telling me that first of all i she keeps saying we're celibate i don't know if y'all are even a we (laughs) you get what i'm saying because tj the fact that you have to say i'm flirting with you y'all not even official now I don't know if that's because TJ don't want to make anything official as boyfriend, girlfriend, because you are officially married and he's a Christian and maybe to his Christian beliefs that he's like, you know what? I am not to mess with anybody who is married. But my whole point is, if you're trying to do that off a of technicality, but you still messing with her in some type of way, then you're still wrong. But I don't think he's messing with her. I think he's really not into Stacy, right? And not because he's into the other sex. I just think he's not into Stacy and he's not really in on what Stacy's trying to put on him. The fact that she's like, I'm flirting with you. Two people can have interest in, he, in each other and not have sex. Yeah. But it's the fact that she, that like he's trying to that she's trying to flirt with him. He he's not open to it. She uh he don't drink, he don't smoke. Um, he don't do anything that is basically accustomed to Stacy's lifestyle. And I'm not talking about the smoking, but I'm just talking about just the way she lives. So I'm like, what is the interest that you have in TJ? And I was talking to my wife and I was like, I think she want to conquer him. Mm. I think it's someone that she may think who is cute. He, you know, he may have a nice body for his age. You know, he, you, you could definitely tell he works out. You get what I'm saying? And she hears that he's celibate. And she may want to be the one that want to break that celibacy. Uh, look, that may sound a little vindictive. That may sound a little evil. They may even sound a little passive aggressive. But that's what it comes off to me. It don't come off as, hey, we are two grownups in an adult relationship. It comes off as, hey, dude, you think I'm cute, TJ? 
And TJ's like, yeah, I think you're beautiful. And I think she's trying to conquer him. That's just my thing. I'm going to watch more on them. Okay. Yeah. So we get to Ashley. She's hosting a backyard get together for Karen and Giselle. Yeah. It's five days until Karen's court date. Throughout this whole episode, they're counting down the, the dates until yeah. it's Karen's court date. Yeah. Ashley set, talks about how her mom has a heart blockage. So she's trying to get her mom to make some healthier choices. Mm-hmm. Karen arrives and she was disappointed with Mia and Jacqueline by the saying that she told them that she wanted to go to rehab comment. Yeah. Mia had a problem with opioids and we see the clip to where she talked about it. Mm-hmm. Giselle sees Karen is deflecting and she is just not handling this very well. Mm-hmm. Karen is scared, but she cannot talk about the details. She talks about how she hasn't really been eating well, hasn't been sleeping well. Mm-hmm. Ashley and Giselle both want to let her know that they do care for her. Okay. Karen does ask Giselle how she feels about Jamal's engagement. And Giselle says that she's happy for him. She thinks that he should be married being that he is a pastor. She thinks pastors and certain people and certain positions should be married i guess by the look of it or i don't know she really didn't go into explanation i mean if he if he go have sex he might as well have sex with his wife i hope you get what i'm saying okay so the girls were surprised because they didn't know that he had a girlfriend talking uh-huh. about her children karen says that she wants giselle to find a partner giselle is not looking for a husband she is just trying to have a good time out here oh okay a- any thoughts on this scene from you no thoughts really it was just kind of rehashing of what happened um i think ashley is getting the storyline of her mom's heart blockage from karen to be honest i don't know if that's bad to say Mm. because karen talked about she had plaque in her arteries or something like that last season and ashley is really grasping for straws Mm. so So you think ashley over here she is fabricating fibbing all the above i mean it could be an issue her mom has but her mom might have had this issue for five years now wow <laughs> like like I don't like it just seems like Ashley's grasping for straws. Yeah. Um I'm very interested in how Giselle is gonna function on this show. <laughs> um I'm very interested in how she's gonna function on this show, be it that her kids is, are in college and then they will be eighteen, um, which means, you know, whatever child support that she was on that's over with and now that he's remarried and things like that, I really wanna see how the foundation of that relationship is going to change just all together. Okay. So we see Wendy and her family go out for dinner. Yes. Her daughter graduated pre-K and one of her sons graduated elementary school. Nice. Congrats. Wendy is going to have an all white party. She is still celebrating her birthday Mm -hmm. and her mom brings up the allowance that Wendy has not sent her yet. So Wendy goes ahead and sends off the allowance. That is crazy. Wendy also threw a, what did she say? A $60,000 birthday party for her mom as well. But okay, here's your money. No. Sorry, mama. <laughs> Wendy talks about how in Nigerian culture, when your parents get older, it is your duty to take care of them. Okay. I like that. Eddie's side of the family is invited to her birthday party. Mm-hmm. Wendy's mom doesn't trust them. They say something along the lines of the fact that Eddie's parents may not be able to come because they're going to be watching the children, either their young children or mm-hmm. Eddie's siblings, children. And the mom thinks that they can go ahead and get a babysitter. So that way they can show up. Okay. Um, Wendy tells her kids that they need to get master's degrees. Mm-hmm. It's a requirement for them. If they don't get it, they do not get their trust. Mm. But Granny prays for success over her grandbabies, and they are going to be sending her an allowance as well. I do want to add that they talked about how Eddie's parents did not attend his wedding. They didn't attend his uh graduation when it came to his law degree Mm. and it was one more thing that they didn't attend uh i forget but yeah they missed a lot of important moments in eddie's life when it comes to his uh relationship with wendy and even himself so i don't think they met the kids in person oh yeah that that was the third thing they hadn't met the kids in person i don't think they met the kids um granny um you get lighter each time i see you right i I just want to speak on, do y'all realize that this is the new anchor of Housewives of Potomac, uh, Real Housewives of Potomac, is, is Wendy. Um, I do believe that Giselle, um, even though she may be on her best behavior, um, we're not going to see Giselle very long. Like, mm-hmm. Wendy, we are seeing the first family <laughs> of, of Housewives of Potomac. Yeah. And basically, the reason why I say that is because it's literally the same the same uh, playbook that we saw with Giselle and her children. You get what I'm saying? So um, the thing about Wendy is she got a lot more things going for her and she's more interesting. <coughs> but I will say this. I think it is sad, and Eddie may be handling it well on camera, that his parents is really not into his family's life and things like that. Um, 
I like the fact that Wendy is, is making a joke of it. But look, she's joking on camera. But I know the expectation Wendy had for her kids and things like that. And it's not to be um, um, bums. <laughs> you right. get what I'm saying? Is 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 there's a mark that need to be met? And I like to see stuff like this because after this scene. This show goes to hell, right? <laughs> right. Mia take us straight down there. You know exactly. what I mean. So that's why I'm like, I like to f- to see this, um, to see what's actually going on in their lives. Even to see Wendy mom praying fire from heaven, as you know, most Nigerian mothers gonna do. Um, it was a good look, at least for me. Yeah, I really enjoy seeing Wendy with her family, yeah. her beautiful children, her husband. Like, just they're just beautiful to look at. Yeah, yeah. Just to see that they're so you know well off and they seem to be like kind hearted people, and it's just it's just great to watch them and i've also felt like wendy was doing a lot of narrating and pushing uh, the stories forward this episode when Mm -hmm. it comes to her confessionals so yeah i like it Mm -hmm. ashley's mom comes to visit her Mm -hmm. she made her mom a healthy drink she wants her mom to get healthy and ashley tells her mom that she could be signing papers as soon as june for her divorce when they get the mediation i don't believe it Ashley was scared of all the responsibilities before, but she's feeling like she can handle things now. Mm -hmm. So the mom tells Ashley that she deserves someone kind in her life. Mm -hmm. Ashley wants the same for her mom. Ashley has expressed many times over the years that she does not like her mom's partner. And the mom says that he has started helping financially, but it's not enough. Her mom works 12 hour days and Ashley knows that she is going to have to provide for her mom when her mom can no longer work. All that time you've been with Michael and you haven't figured out a way to get your mom right. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, like we know why you're with Michael. Like, like it, it's, it's basically the unsaid truth of the show. You get what I'm saying? We don't even believe that you're going to get a divorce. Um, Maybe you might be on to something about her using her mother as a storyline. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going to make you this green drink that I never made you ever, but I'm right. going to make it on camera. <laughs> oh, look at oh look at my children on the counter. You get what I'm saying? I, you may be on to something because really outside of this, Ashley has no storyline. Mm-hmm. Zero. Yeah. Jassy's boyfriend was honored at the White House um, along with the NFL team, the Chiefs, because they won the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. She's looking forward to hosting this event for everyone to meet, mix, and mingle. Mm-hmm. Ink arrives with Mia. Giselle chats with him a little bit. And Ink talks about how the kids are the highest priority when it comes to this whole situation. Yeah. Now, Ink, Eddie, and Kiarna's boyfriend meet. Kiarna clears up that her boyfriend is not a drug dealer. And Mia concedes and says he's a social worker, I could tell. Okay. Wendy introduces TJ as Stacy's man to Eddie. Mm. Ashley uh, talks to TJ and says, so you guys are friends. And Eddie's like, you know, great relationships start off with friendship. Mm Mm-hmm. TJ tells them that after it gets physical, he tends to get bored. So that's why they're building on their friendship and relationship the way that they are. Mm. They do a lot of stuff together. They even went to the zoo today. Dude, you see what I mean? Like, I don't think he's on the same, the same, like, book you're in, Stacey. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? First of all, like, they talked about Ink, about how short he is, how his small stature. And then they talked about Kiana's man. And they were like, these men are not really tall or or they don't have the 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 the, the aura, I guess. Right. TJ comes in. He has the aura. He has the, the size and things like that. He's just weird. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Right. Wendy introducing to Eddie. Hey, this is uh stacy's man and things like that and he over there high-fiving state he he over there high-fiving wendy on some speaking into existence girl what do you mean speaking into existence <laughs> like 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 y'all can be boyfriend and girlfriend mm-hmm. without speaking anything into existence but i i think maybe he's leaning on his christianity of not messing with her on a te- on a technicality sense but um yeah, Tita just comes off as weird. Even you got Ashley in the, which was kind of funny, in the confessional talk about Mayday, Mayday, Stacy, run. Uh-huh. But I'm like, Stacy, I think you're trying to trick us. Like, I, I find it very hard. And maybe it's just me. I'm going to say it. The husband you married and the man that you're into now. Like, like, come on. Like, like, like. You married this man, but you're trying to tell me you're so into this man that you're trying to hold out so much on your celibacy and things like that. I don't really believe Stacey when it comes to TJ at all. Mm-hmm. And and I think TJ is just there as some type of arm candy and things like that. I, I, I don't believe it. That's like, fair. I even said it, it could be a business arrangement. Like, like, By the way, it, it there's no weird. chemistry. Yeah. And Jazzy's boyfriend, Darius, arrives. He introduces himself to everyone. Mm-hmm. He talks about how it was a cool experience going to the White House. Mia tells Karen that... Giselle told her that she was coming after her. Mm. 
Giselle pulls them away from the group for a private conversation. And Giselle confirms that she did tell Mia about the opioid comment. Mm-hmm. But she says, Mia says that she did not go to rehab. She overdosed. She was in, hos- in the hospital. And that's what got her into chiropractic care to get off the opioids. Yeah. Karen just makes it clear. You don't start with me. There won't be any issues. And Mia tells her she loves her. Karen tells her that her love is strange. That is true. Mia says, sometimes your friends don't always say what you want. And Karen says, you know what? We're both wrong for going low. Mm -hmm. Mia talks about how she could go lower. Karen talks about how she hangs low as the balls. Mm -hmm. Mia says, well, you know all about that. Mm -hmm. And Karen tells her that is your profession. That is your profession. (laughs) Listen here. Karen said it herself. She said, listen, (coughs) I will apologize for going low. But I will go low again. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Here's the thing about Mia. Mia, you lost in the whole interaction with Karen because we saw what you tried to do in the thing of like you you don't have the wit like Karen. You can't go toe to toe with Karen. If you were the one, you wouldn't be upset that like she brought up your opioids. But Karen's going to go low and she's going to get you up off her. You exactly. get what I'm saying? So it's like, don't try to make it seem like, don't go and try to get the teacher to try to be like, oh, she she did this to me. No, you tried to basically hit uh, Karen upside her head and you tried to get you and Jacqueline to jump her. Right. You get what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, guess what? Karen beat both of y'all up. Okay. You know what I mean? So Karen has lunch with her cousin. Yeah. Apparently her cousin was on the phone with her when she was in the accident. Mm-hmm. He is concerned about her stress levels. She tells him that she's been stressed ever since the tax issues her mom was getting sick around that time they sold the house and she um you know also never really fully grieved for her parents yeah everything just came to a head at the night of the accident and it was a lot for her at this point she's focused on court on healing and putting her faith in god listen here karen i understand what you're going through and when i say i understand i don't understand personally okay when i say i understand that it's just me just saying that before i insult this whole scene right Listen here, it's one thing to put what you're going through your on your dead mama. Come on now. <laughs> you, do, you get what I'm saying? Like, like now it's the tax issues. It's Ray. It's everybody's fault except for the one who was behind the vehicle, right? The one who didn't even have the vehicle registered. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's everybody. There's so many steps. And that's what I'm saying. It's so many steps that was wrong before the actual DUI. Hey, do you get what I'm saying? There was negligence on your whole point. You did not care about getting registered. You did not care about anything of the sort. So to put it on your mama and what you're going through, I understand. Listen, losing a parent is hard, no matter how no matter how old you are. But guess what? I don't see a lot of people out here getting D, getting DUIs and putting it on a mama and putting it on their daddy. Like you, you get through it. The tax problems, selling the house. It's shown us this flashback to try to make Karen a sympathetic figure. And granted, I can get with Karen when it comes to her being witty and her going after other girls. But when it comes to like this, the things that you actually have to be accountable for, you got to do better and take accountability in this, Karen. You okay. get what I'm saying? For me, I'm not going to expect Karen to take accountability on a TV show when her court date hasn't even come up yet. I'm all right. You're right. So... I don't fault her for navigating it the way that she is. One thing she said that stood out to me was I talk to my Jesus and I pay my lawyer. And that's exactly what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. She needs to make better decisions and maybe get help Mm -hmm. if she has a problem, but it won't do her any good to come on here talking about, she has an issue with this, a problem with this, mm-hmm. and then she could get the max to whatever, you know, could happen when it comes to mm-hmm. court because she may very well feel the weight of all all of this on her and change her ways, but may not want to reap all of the repercussions when it comes to the law. So yeah. I think that Karen's navigating it the best way she can. I think she could do a little less deflection, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't expect her to come on here talking about she is just so wrong and she's you know, a drunk and all this type of stuff, especially if that's not really the case. If it really was stress and she was coping in unhealthy mm-hmm. ways, then there are ways for her to improve off of that. So I just think it's, it's a sticky situation and it's a delicate way you need to handle it on camera. Yeah. So Gordon comes over to chat with Ink and Mia. Nastiness. He says that he does not want to film with Ink. When it comes to the kids and they're around each other, he'll be cordial. But he doesn't want to promote Ink in any type of relationship. Mm -hmm. Mia says that Ink is part of our co-parenting. You should want to know the type of man that's around your kids. Mm -hmm. And Gordon says he knows. He's a man that committed adultery with his wife. Mm. 
shortly after Gordon and Mia were married, he says that Mia had an abortion Mm -hmm. because they were messing around with each other. Wow. And Ink didn't know about that. Mia was kind of tight lipped and it seemed like it was true. Gordon asked them, did you have at least two affairs with my wife? They don't answer, Mm -hmm. but he does ask, do you think Jeremiah is yours? And Ink does think Jeremiah is his. Mm -hmm. Mia tells Gordon that what he put her through was not normal. Gordon storms out. Yeah. Mia thinks that he just needs to take accountability at some point. Mm -hmm. They don't want the kids to know anything. She says that the kids think that Ink is her best friend. Mm -hmm. And Ink says that Mia needs to close her chapter with Gordon for them all to move on. Now, before I go, I just have a question, Blair. Was it, did I hear in this, um, not in this episode, but at some point that the kids saw Ink in bed with Mia one time, like just chilling? Yeah, that's unlike Mia lies. So the kids like know something's up. Like Mia just be saying stuff. Now, here's my thing. Here's what I think happened. Hearing how Gordon went off in this scene, and not like go off as if he's yelling, but basically like, I don't want to film with y'all, with the kids. I think he came over not knowing cameras was there. That's Probably what, not even know Ink was there. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. I think he know Ink is there because Ink lives there. <laughs> like Ink is there. But it's just something about like he came over. And when he came through, he kind of looked kind of like caught off guard he, when he when uh when the kids was being asked to go to the room. He was staring out the window with his back towards the camera, kind of drinking, kind of just like an awkward feeling. Right. As if like Mia kind of like tricked him into like shooting this scene. To because the pl- he wants to make it clear he's not OK with this arrangement. Exactly. Uh-uh. So I think that's why when he said, like, I don't want to shoot with any of y'all and things like that, because I don't want to support it. And then he stormed off. I think Mia created this whole scene just to you know show her story right um i'll say this right even with that bail that i gave gordon i'm taking it back a you uh, you are upset with ink because he had an affair with your wife who you for one left your wife for gordon right and cheated on your wife and cheated on your wife but you are mad at ink that he had an affair with your wife early in the marriage that caused her to early terminate a pregnancy. It's not fun when the rabbit got the gun. It's not fun when the rabbit got the gun, Mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, Gordon, what you reap is what, what you sow is what you will reap. You basically wanted this life. Like, look, I know nothing about Gordon's ex-wife. I don't. But I can probably be 100% sure it was nothing like Mia's life. Nothing with Mia's history and things like that. It was to the point where you lost basically your inheritance with your family because of Mia. So it's like, but you knew these consequences and you knew these repercussions. But now when it's reality, now you want to stand in the corner with your arms folded and be mad at this whole arrangement. No, you wanted this. And this is the life that you basically invested in to have with Mia. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll just say that Mia showed herself to Gordon of who she was when they first met. Yeah. I mean, he met her at the strip club. So mm-hmm. Gordon, this is the life that you chose. Facts. Mia has been consistent with who she is and this this is the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um what I also what I have to add, which I want to add um since we talk about Mia, I think we have a new Mia on the show. Now granted, no one's gonna be Mia when it comes to being Mia. I keep your eyes on Jazzy. Mm. When she was throwing that party for her for her for her man I, I was like, oh, this is th- this is baby Mia right here. You get what I'm saying? The one that had her whole timeline of what happened with the baby and things of that nature. Jazzy found herself so happy to basically tell everybody, this is my Super Bowl winning. And it seemed like she found her worth in like being with this guy who potentially you was the side chick to. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So keep your eyes on just that interaction in Jazzy. We already think she's a little weird, too. But um. That's all I have to say. Anything you have to add to this episode? Blair? That's all I got. Listen here. Blair did a good job powering through. Sick and all. Make sure y'all leave some love in the comments and for thanks her. thanks for y'all that have been saying get well. I'm getting better. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how how get better you are, but guess what? You're here. We're happy you're here. And we see y'all next time. Mm-hmm.